Hey everyone, this video is, well, look at the title, Chiapa M422. So I was meaning to do this video for quite some time and it just got kind of busy and I just, I started it and then decided to do some other things and then, so I'll come back to this video. So what we're looking at is the, uh, the Chiapa M4 Pro 2 series and I got this um, this rifle, I think, back in February, I think. Anyway, here's the box, and, and I did some opening here and showing some some stills here. But I thought I'd just go over why I chose this one. And the reason why I picked this rifle is because I didn't have an auto-loading 22 long rifle, so I wanted to add one to my collection. I looked at some other options, um, looked at auction sites, uh, gun stores, and found this one. Some of the other options would have been like the Marlin 60, um, the Ruger 1022, Smith & Wesson 15 Sport, but the price was a bit too high on, on the latter versions. This one here was, was quite cheap, uh, $255.74 plus shipping and handling. It was, it was claimed to be a blemished model, so I guess there was some minor aesthetic issues. I didn't notice any, so I thought, from the picture, uh, why not give it a try? So, is this a good value? What do you guys think? It's about uh, $220 US or 195 euros at the time of purchase. Thought it was a pretty good deal. And considering, uh, I've, I did take it out and it, it shot really well <clears throat> with CCI Mini Mag. No hang ups, um, no issues at all. So, as far as it goes, it's uh, it's been a really pretty cool rifle. I've only taken it once, but first impressions are pretty darn good. So I was on Kappa's website about a couple months ago or so, and I believe the price was 563 euros, which equals about 850 Canadian dollars or 630 US dollars. Seems like a lot of money uh, for this rifle. I guess if you're in those particular countries, maybe your earning power is, is greater. Maybe that's the deal, but I don't think it's worth uh, that much <laughs> in uh, Canadian dollars. There's a lot of options out there that uh, I know of and don't know of, which are probably better for this particular uh, rifle. So the M4 appears to match a lot of the parts from the AR-15, M16, M4 platforms. Again, I'm, I'm reading this from an online source. I don't have one yet, uh, an AR-15. I have the lower, and so I'm ready to get started on building it. I was waiting because our government is keeps threatening to uh, recall those guns, I guess, is a, is a friendly term. Basically, it's confiscation of um, private property. So our government is anti-gun, that's been voted in, and they feel that these assault weapons, um, again that term is used here in Canada as they are as it is in the States, it's ridiculous, but the AR-15 has been on the, the sites, I guess, of our government. So I have the lower and I plan on building it I had planned on building it, but I wanted to wait. I didn't want to invest a lot of money and then the government confiscates them and then I'm out of cash because I, I don't believe we're going to get a fair market value for these guns. So um, I also have purchased, pre-purchased an AR-10 upper and lower that uh, that is going to be coming later this year. That is a non-restricted firearm, which means it's different rules apply to that gun. And... I can go over some of those details in another video, or you can just check what restricted and non-restricted is. Maybe I'll make a video on that, a brief video. But anyway, it doesn't require us to have to to store it a different way and some other things and, and transportation and we have that special permission to take places. So I'm going to be working on that probably this year. So there seems to be a, quite a lot of parts um, on the Chiapa that match a typical um, AR-15, M16, M4 platform. 
And these include the buffer tube threads and the lower receiver, a pistol grip interface, the magazine well, um, the entire trigger pack, including all the pins and entire safety lever, and the pick rail. Uh, I believe the pick rail on those other platforms would be a different materials, but this one here is is this polymer type material, which is kind of uh, kind of cool. So I've just taking some still pictures, as you can see here. The forward assist, it, it doesn't actually work. It's kind of interesting. It, it, you can push it, um, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't actually do anything. So I guess they just wanted to create the, uh, the feel of, of a, real, a real rifle. Uh, also, um, the bolt release is non-functioning as well which is uh, another interesting thing. But tension to detail is pretty good. So I admire that part of the, of the gun. So the mag well is flared and it does drop free when you push the magazine release button. I haven't tried it yet. Well, I don't think I will at the range. For those of you that can shoot these type of guns outside where you live, I can't, then you can try this and practice your uh, to reloads and things like that. But I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of this COVID um, lockdown. I think it's ridiculous and I can't even get to the range and I, uh, which means I can't shoot and so I'm just kind of like staring at my guns here. It's kind of annoying. For those of you who have properties and places or private ranges, then that's awesome. Good for you. And hopefully you're out there shooting for the rest of us that are inside, just looking at videos. So what is this rifle? And I, I did look at some information online, so if the sources weren't 100% accurate, feel free to correct below. Well, from what I read, this is a reproduction of the M4 military service carbine, so I imagine it would be a good training rifle for someone who is looking to get an AR-15 or AR-10 platform of some sort. I don't know if it's, that makes sense or not, but I would probably just get one of those rifles anyway um, and, and not worry about it. I guess if you're in a military setting, I don't know if that makes sense at all. I'm not in the military, so I don't even think this, uh, they would probably use these for training anyway or something similar. In the old days, of course, they did use training rifles but I, I don't really know. If someone's in the military, uh, feel free to chime in. So this company is called Chiappa. I may have said Chiappa earlier, but it is Chiappa. It's an Italian company and they operate out of Ohio to service the North American market. And they're the same company that makes those interesting revolvers called the Rhino. They also make other firearms and reproductions. So it's a pretty interesting company. I check them out because they have a lot of pretty cool stuff, even if you don't plan on buying anything from them. They have a lot of a lot of interesting things going on there. Thanks for just looking at some pins here. Array pin, captive pin for the, the takedown. Um, yeah, not much really to say there. Just kind of interesting to have something like this. This is the first rifle this type of configuration that I own so little things like this that a lot of people take for granted um, I've kind of find interesting even if you do have it maybe you still find it interesting but um, otherwise we'll just get into some of the details of the rifle I'll start with the barrel first in the next section just talk about various aspects of it if you have anything else you'd like to add, feel free to, uh, to chime in below. So I'll start at the barrel. It's a 16 inch barrel, carbon steel, matte black finish, pick rails on all, I guess, sides. <laughs> uh, it is kind of a shape there, so I guess we can call them sides. I'm wondering if, well, I'm not wondering, well, I'm thinking about taking off the pick rails on the bottom and the sides. I don't really need them. and I'm, Curious to see how much weight that'll shed, but 
This gun's pretty heavy for what I thought it was going to be. So there are three different pick rails, or three pick rails in series here. And total length is 11 and 3 quarter inches. You can see some marking on the metal. Maybe that's what they refer to as being blemished. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's why I got a discount on this gun. But you can see that these are, this is one of the sections of the pick rail. I just took this off just to see what that looks like and <clears throat> it wasn't too difficult to take off. So just kind of moving along here, I'm just looking at some of the options. Uh, mag release button works fine. Um, forward assist doesn't work, but it does. There is a spring inside, so you, I guess you could play around with it and brass deflector there. Um, <clears throat> when you charge the handle, the, the dust cover opens up, so that's kind of cool as well. So anyway, just kind of pulling some pins out. This is really tight to open, so I had to kind of force it open. I don't know if that's if that's similar to other type of AR guns, AR platforms, but <clears throat> there's the hammer there, and yeah, just taking a look at some details. There's nothing in, in the buffer tube. Well, the tube itself exists, I guess, in there, but there's there's no there's no weight or anything like that. And I have some some sights on there that I purchased. It's kind of cool. So I'm gonna take out the bolt. So just pull the charging handle back. Everything pulls out nice and easy. And the dust cover opens up. So just pulling out the, the housing and the carrier assembly, I guess to call it. <clears throat> you can look at some of the workmanship there, the <laughs> the welding. But I don't really care. It's, it's not a big deal. As long as it works, uh, that's all I care about. And it does work. See the firing pin and all that sort of fun stuff in there. Like I said, I took it out, fired some rounds, and it worked out pretty flawlessly. So just looking at the safety, you have uh, semi-automatic, which is fire, safe, and then you have no man's land, I guess, in between. It's just kind of, yeah, some dead space there. Um, collapsible buttstock, so it'll spring. That doesn't really do anything, I'm just twisting around. There's a spot for a sling there as well. And you can expand it out. I took a measurement here as well, so if you want to take a look and see how long this, yeah, 11 inches, I guess, is the total length fully uh, expanded. So, anyway, this is the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I am looking forward to using the gun more as soon as we have the ability to go to the range. The um, This type of gun, I, I, I can't take it out and just shoot it anywhere. It requires specific transportation to and from a from one location to another, my residence where the gun is stored, to a shooting range or there's some criteria there. I, I just can't take it out and shoot it or else I'll risk um, fine, jail, confiscation, all that stuff. And I just don't want that to happen. The other thing that you can see from the picture is that you shouldn't dry fire the gun because it's a rim fire. It could damage the, um, what would you call that, the uh, breech face. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong with that terminology. Also, I read that you shouldn't leave the magazines loaded for any length of time other than when you plan on shooting it and unloading it. So perhaps there's some quality issues or maybe the springs in these magazines are um, unusual or different than most magazines. I don't know. I don't have any experience with ARs, but maybe that's a question for you. Can you leave your magazines stored with ammo in them? I've watched many videos from many different people, and the consensus is, yeah, that's no problem. So anyway, if you have any questions or would like to see something different about the gun that I didn't show, please leave a comment. If you leave a constructive comment, I'm definitely going to reply. If you don't, I'm probably going to give you a sarcastic answer or just delete your videos. So let's all try to be constructive and supportive on this channel. If not, just go somewhere else.
because we don't I don't really want to hear from uh, some negativity we have enough of that in this world so yeah if you have any questions or anything else anything specific I'll make custom videos if you like or any other videos from other channel or any other um, from my other library <clears throat> videos if you want to something that's unusual someone asked about a firing pin on a particular gun so I just made a, a quick video about that for them so if you have any anything like that any um, custom questions or anything specific to anything uh, let me know and I'll make something because I kind of like to make these uh, interesting one-off videos as well so thanks so much for watching and I have a couple pictures and then something at the end for you to uh, to watch thanks <music>